quality entertainment, family environment, and 365 days of happiness. Disney has closed on two separate occasions, the National Day of Mourning after the assassination of John F. Kennedy and 9-11. But one of the lesser known closures that no one is talking about is the Yippie Invasion of 1970, a protest that led police in full riot gear to evacuate nearly 30,000 people. To better understand what happened on this fateful day, we need to dig deeper into the Yippie movement. In the heydays of the free speech movement, a new counterculture spawned by the name of the Youth International Party, or Yippie for short. Constantly challenging the status quo, the Yippies employed theatrical gestures such as street theaters and powwows to spread their message. Since its conception, Disneyland has banned men with long hair from entering into the gates. In the late 1960s, for the first time, Disney changed their strict dress code, thus making it a perfect target for Yippie Pow Wow. Thousands of flyers were passed amongst the masses with a rather unusual itinerary. Events included Black Panther's breakfast at Aunt Jemima's Pancake House and a female gathering in Fantasyland to liberate Minnie Mouse. The pinnacle of this powwow was the occupation of Tom Sawyer Island to barbecue Porky Pig. It's not certain if barbecuing Porky Pig was just a jab at the establishment or that they didn't realize he is not a Disney character. Word reached Disney officials on what the Yippies were planning and it did not sit well, to say the least. Two years prior, there was a protest at the Democratic National Convention where nearly 10,000 individuals caused riots. Executives were not about to have that and put together a plan of action. It was a normal, magical morning like that of any other Disneyland day. Families gathered from near and far, hoping to enjoy the festivities, but they weren't the only ones. As the Yippies made their way to the entrance, managers were waiting for them. The man at each turnstile, Upper Disney management greeted guests as well as those who met the Yippie criteria. Long hair, hippie-esque clothing. But when they got to the gates, they were pulled aside and prompted with a simple task. If you're here to have a good time, you're more than welcome to visit Disneyland. But if you're here to cause trouble, you're eventually going to be asked to leave the park. The Yippies began to assemble by the masses. As promised, the group began to consume Disneyland. At last, the assembly of the Yippies was complete. That's where things took an interesting turn. Amongst those in attendance, 300 Yippie members actually paid the park admission to enter, not nearly as many as they expected, let alone the founders themselves. In fact, it is unclear if they were ever going to attend this massive event. The dwindling of the Yippie gathering seemed imminent, as there was no liberation of Minnie Mouse, nor a pancake breakfast with the Black Panthers. As fate would have it, this did not stop the more seasoned Yippies from giving an impromptu leadership. Dozens of Yippies converged on the Chicken in the Sea restaurant, a mutiny of sorts as they ascended the ropes of this ship-like establishment. From there, they began to chant, Ho, 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 Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh is gonna win, to up their political performance. Although the crowds were uneasy and annoyed, no one was prevented from getting their lunch. The Yippies knew at this time they needed to up the ante. At the break of dawn, Anaheim and Fullerton police assembled backstage on the Disneyland property. In an attempt to keep the peace, they strategically assembled behind Main Street USA in Tomorrowland. Over 150 officers in full-fledged riot gear were ready to be dispersed. As much as the leaders of the Yippie movement spent planning their big move, Disney was one step ahead of the game. Not only did they line the outskirts of the park with law enforcement, 
They had covert management scattered throughout the park that used code words over walkie-talkies. Even a command center was set up to manage the operations of monitoring the park. Disneyland was prepared. Throughout the day, Disney leadership periodically shadowed the more seasoned yippies throughout the park, gently reminding them to keep things cool and respect the other families that were visiting the park. The yippies insisted on making their presence known and moved to the climax of their protest, Tom Sawyer Island. The group once again converged and moved to Tom Sawyer Island by the droves. In an attempt to make a statement, they overtook the fort and replaced it with the Yippie flag. Although their attempt was admirable, yet again did they fail to make waves, nor barbecue Porky Pig. In a last ditch effort, they finally migrated to Main Street, USA. What the Yippies did not expect is that they were going to be met by a large assembly of police. Lined in front of the castle and up and down Main Street in formation, the police were on standby. Not deterred from their presence, the Yippies began to make a snake dance all around the central hub and marched with the Disneyland band chanting obscenities. Fed up with the antics of the Yippies, patrons retaliated. An eruption of God Bless America began from those who could no longer take it. United they stood as they attempt to drown out the ruckus. It's rumored that one of the Yippies attempted to remove the American flag from a street post but was immediately intercepted by a God-fearing patriot. A small altercation ensued. Enough was enough. Police with the help of cast members began evacuating the entire park. It is rumored that nearly 30,000 people were removed from the park that day, including families as well as yippies. The chaos came to a screeching halt before any real damage occurred. The park was once empty and remained closed for six hours was the powwow worth disrupting the happiest place on earth? You decide.